Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this dream that you gave me. Thank you, Father. So I had a dream that I was talking to God and I was telling him, why does the Bible reading become more effective when I read it? Because I had a dream recently that I posted yesterday about the Lord telling me to make a video where I was quoting scripture that the saints are to play the video and pray those scriptures in their lives and everything like that. And God will work through it. And I said, God, why? I said, why, you know, why can't they just read the Bible for themselves? And why does it have power and authority when I read it? I don't understand. And the Lord spoke back to me clear as day. I was shocked by what he said. He said, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous and the words, the righteous were capitalized. And he said that availed much. And I was like, wow. So I stand corrected. And I have to say that because someone had emailed me in the past and they were saying that these guys that came out of witchcraft, I've never seen their video. So I don't know what they said. I'm just trying to remember what this person said to me. And he said that they said that it's certain prayers by certain people that the kingdom of darkness doesn't want them to pray, doesn't want these righteous people to pray because it really affects their kingdom. And I thought it was malarkey. I was like, <laughs> anybody can pray the Bible. That makes no sense to me. I thought it was crazy. And God has corrected me. It's true. When you have a certain righteous standing with the Lord, when you have a certain status with God, when your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, when that person prays and when that person quotes scripture and everything like that, it is way more powerful than someone who is living a lukewarm life, whose name isn't written in the Lamb's book of life and someone who is unrighteous, someone who is not where they should be with God. And unfortunately, I hate to be the bearer of this bad news, but there are many saints that are living compromised lives where they are truly saints. But how can I say this? They sell the gospel short and it's very upsetting. There are saints, I'm not going to name names, but there's people that I know and love, would love to follow their ministries, would love to. But I can feel very strongly in my spirit and not just feeling in my spirit. I can hear it that they do not share the full gospel. They sell themselves short and it might be on the feast. It might be on the Sabbaths. It might be on righteousness, the righteousness of the gospel, the honey of the gospel. They sell themselves short and I can feel it very strongly. And there's this one lady, I'm not going to say her name and I couldn't if I wanted to. She's Indian. She has an Indian name and I, I don't even know how to pronounce her name. Beautiful woman. I would love to share her ministry. And I was listening to her channel and I felt very strongly this woman is not sharing the full gospel though. She's holding back. And I knew that. And then I had a dream and God showed me her and God showed me that I was correct in what I was feeling in my spirit that she wasn't sharing the full gospel. And so if someone shares the full gospel and they are in right standing with God, and what does it mean to share the full gospel? To share the full gospel is when the living God is telling you to do something and it may cause heartache. It may cause people to leave your ministry. It may cause loved ones and people to turn against you. See, the majority of Christians are okay with a certain level of the gospel. And then you have another group of Christians, a large group that is okay with a lot of the meat of the gospel. But most Christians will go bunkers when you try to share the honey of the gospel. And when you try to share everything that God is telling you to share, a lot of Christians can't even deal with people that are prophetic and things of this nature. And so what I see in the world, and sadly, I see it so often, so often. And it's so disappointing. Literally, it grieves me. It breaks my heart. And I question to myself, how is it affecting the Lord? If I'm so grieved and heartbroken by it, how is it affecting him? Because they get to this point and God starts ministering to them to share other things, but God knows that he can't count on them to do it. 
because they say, oh no, I, I can't do that. I'll lose half my ministry. I can't go that far. And so what happens is they become ashamed, ashamed of the gospel, ashamed of the gospel, because that is what it means to be ashamed of the gospel. And I understand, I understand being in that predicament because someone may say, well, Shana, you have your comments turned off. You can just say whatever. No, that's not true. I have been there and I didn't always have my comments turned off, by the way. And I understand there are things that I cringe like, God, you want me to share that? I don't think they're ready to hear that, Lord. (laughs) I don't know about that. And I have to ask for confirmation and everything else because I'm like, Lord, you know, I need to know you really want me to share that. And when God gives me confirmation, I have to be bold about it and I have to come out and I have to share what he tells me to share. And yes, I know that it's going to cause people to turn away from me. And it has. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to watch people walk away from your ministry, to see your ministry be cut in half. I know what it's like to have all kind of spiritual warfare everywhere you turn, the devil trying to shut you down. So people may say, well, Shawnee, you got your comments turned off. You know, you're not going through none. That devil is a lie. I go through pure hell for getting the gospel out, but I have to obey God. And at the end of the day, I don't want to be ashamed of the gospel. And God was teaching me that in that righteousness, when I quote the Bible, when I pray, it is powerful. And I was really shocked by that. And so that was the dream that I had. And I pray that we all will be this way, that we will all step up to the plate and give it all we've got and be the best that we can be. And that is my hope for all mankind, that we will be the best that we can be, because I don't believe that God made any of us to be losers or to be half standard. We should all be the best. And that is what I believe in. And that is what I try to convey in my ministry. Anyway, I love you all. God bless you. Bye.